Just telling us your first name. Alex. What were your dreams as a kid? Oh, man. As a kid, I, you know, <clears throat> the first is going to sound cliche, but the, the first uh, projection that I made, I guess, at four or five years old was that I wanted to be a specifically a Tigre del Norte, <laughs> you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to be a musician. Uh, I thought those were the coolest guys in the world, you know, watching them on TV. They, they all have their gold, you know, uh, all gold outfits and they just made a lot of noise and it just looked like, it looked like the life to me. I don't know. It was, uh, it was, uh, I guess a calling. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your childhood? Yeah, you know, my uh, I'm I'm born and raised uh, in in LA, uh, in Southern California, I should say, not really LA. Uh, and uh, I moved here at uh, uh, in uh, I moved to Denver at an early enough age. Um, I believe it was a nine or ten years old. Uh, and so for me, it was a uh, it was a it was a blessing growing up in a Mexican American household. Uh, a lot of love, a lot of good food. Uh, I. Uh, close with my siblings I have two sisters an older brother and uh, it just you know it, it was always uh, we always had enough could you tell us uh, about your relationship bro with your do you dad? mind do you mind if we start start or ask that question over start this over I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you uh, I just uh, I when you asked me that, it took me somewhere else and I got a little bit nervous about what I was saying to you. I wasn't paying attention to what I was, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it just got me off track. Is, is that okay? Do you want to start over? I don't think we have to. I mean, you okay. can expand on that. Uh, okay. Yeah, just expand on it. Because we usually do this just raw, uncut, no cut. So yeah. we, we'll leave that in there. Hey, you start from the top, but... Was, yeah, still, yeah, yeah. Childhood, um, right? You know, it, it's uh, the reason. The reason that I that, that I went somewhere else mentally is just because we we we, we suffered a lot of uh, physical abuse as uh, as as children, uh, a lot of a lot of hitting, a lot of beating, and uh, and it came from my father, and it wasn't something that, uh, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about it, man. Like, uh, a part of me loves him for doing that. Um, because it, I am who I am and I wouldn't be that, you know what I mean? But that's, 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 that's odd to feel, uh, cause it's abuse and, uh, and he's, he's the greatest dad in the world, like to this day, you know what I mean? And, uh, so to me, it's just, um, is, it was a beautiful childhood, man, even though it had that, you know, and, uh, and I'm very thankful for it. And, uh. And so yeah, no, the childhood was good though. My childhood was good. It was it was uh, peaceful enough outside of those beatings or outside of that physical uh, abuse that ended at about the time right at the time that we moved here. Uh, I later found out that uh, the reason we moved here was to get away from him, uh, and that that was my mom's uh, ultimatum: is you either stop hitting them or or we're out, you know. And uh, and so we were out. And uh, glory be to God, like he, he got his life together and realized what was really important. And, and it wasn't this machismo shit that, that he was integrated as a child. Like he really, uh, he really was doing what he thought was best and didn't realize how fucked up it was until it was too late, you know? And then he got a second chance and you usually don't get those in life. Um, and so he, uh, he changed. He did a complete 180. He never laid a hand on us again. What's and your relationship like with him now? Uh, my pops is dope, man. Like we, we're 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 good, man. He uh, he's he's one of my best friends. Um, my dad's very simple in nature. He's very black and white, A B C. Uh, he doesn't complicate shit up here, and uh, and I do, you know. And so that really uh, that really helps me sometimes when I'm going through some deep shit or I'm going through the darkest times that I've been through. Uh, you know, when I, when I just exhaust myself mentally, my dad's the one that kind of comes up and he's just kind of like, you know, like, Hey, like what, what's going on with you, man? You either do or you don't, or, you know, he just breaks it down in a way that really resonates with me and gets me to, uh, you know, a place that I, that I'm functional again. And that's a lot, there's a lot to be said for that, 
you know, for someone that overanalyzes and deals with anxiety and depression. And, you know. What about your relationship with your mom? Uh, it's a it's a great relationship, man. My mom's uh, my mom's my hero. You know, uh, I've never known anybody that works harder than my mom. Uh, she's she's the definition of a workaholic, and <laughs> it's uh, and it's amazing to see. Like it's really awe-inspiring to see how hard she works. Uh, I envy it, you know. Uh, I, I try to emulate it, and I cannot. Mm. And uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. My mom works to the point that it's unhealthy, uh, but she functions like that. She works like that. She's built like that, and that's how she's happy. Um, and so, you know, it's uh, you can't knock it. You know, you respect it and. Uh, my mom demands respect. She's a, she's a beautiful woman. She, uh, she taught me the definition of love. And uh, she's, uh, she's my hero, man. I mean, she's, she's- How'd she make you feel? You know, she makes Briefly, me- Briefly, what would you describe? Like when you think of your mom, how's that emotional response? <clears throat> that I need to do more that I need to do more to make her proud, uh, to live up to the man that I think she feels I should be. And, uh, and that's lifelong, I think, you know? And I appreciate that, uh, even though it's heavy to carry sometimes. It navigates me, it, uh, it directs me. How do you deal with that pressure, right, to in live up to an expectation and how do you make that expectation from someone else's to your own you know in different ways man some some days i deal with it by working my ass off and uh, and it's made me successful and some days i resent her for it and uh i look to do the opposite you know uh It's, uh, it's a love, it's a love hate, I guess, not with her, but with that situation. It's a love hate. Like, you know, I thank you for wanting me to be this man, but you know, just appreciate who I am now though, right now at this moment. And so it's, uh, and I know that she does, but as her, as, as sons, we tend to magnify and project and, and just, you know, moms are everything to us, man. We, we want that approval. We want that stamp. We want her to say, you're doing good, mijo. Like, keep, keep doing it. How do you, so how do you find that within yourself, just being that moment of like, I'm good with myself, regardless of the expectations or somebody else wants you to be? Uh, I do a lot, man. I do a lot, like in the arts, in business, as a parent, like I do a lot. I wear a lot of hats. And so I know what I do is not light work. I know not your average Joe can do it or does do it. And I don't say that, I say that as humbly as possible. And, and, and I, don't, I don't expect anybody to do anything like I do. Like I do it my way, escrow's way, you know, Alex's way. And so for me, it, uh, it yeah, it, uh, I don't know. I lost the question, man. You know, those, thought, those thoughts take you down different roads. What's the biggest thing you learned from your parents taking away? How to work hard. How to work hard, how to, good, how, how to be good people. Like just genuinely have a good heart. Uh, my parents would, 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 sit, would, would serve a stranger a meal, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of Hispanic Latino families are that way. We're built that way as a community. We, we'll, we take care of our own. And, uh, and my, my parents are no different. They taught me the meaning of gente, you know, uh, of uh, a pride, a pride of hard work, about, uh, of, of, of doing things right and reaping the benefits of doing things right and that there is no replacement for that. There is no shortcut for that, uh, which is huge for someone like me who tries to find the shortcut to every situation because my brain's wired to make 10 minutes turn into 10 seconds, you know? I want to do that. Who would you say first taught you love and how? My mother. My mother. She, uh, 
you know, my mom's love, and I know everybody says this, but my mom's love is 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 the greatest love in the world. Like, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, shit, there's no there's no boundary. I forget what the word is. Uh, no, I, it's no, no, bound? no, no, no. The the word like unconditional. unconditional <laughs> it's just unconditional love. Thank you, brother. Uh, it, it's very unconditional, and uh, and I pushed my limits as a child, like I really did in every way. Like I pushed my limits, and uh, my brother and I both did. And uh, I've been rebellious outside the box from the start. You know, I, I from the moment that I can remember, even in elementary school, and so. It, uh, you know, having her love me through those things has taught me that, you know, what, what, what love was. And I, having a child now, I, uh, I, try, I try to exert that same, that same type of feeling to him. Could you tell us about your first love and how that felt? It's whatever you associate as your first love. It could be a person, hobby, um, anything that you would come up like. Oh man, I was gonna I was gonna go into relationships. Then you started going a different road, man. My first love was hip hop, okay. hands down. Yeah. No, no, there's no shaking about that, bro. Hip hop. Yeah. Absolutely. What did it do for you? Describe that when you when you had that. Describe the love in hip hop for you. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, man. My one of my earliest memories of hip hop was my was my mom finding my brother's death row greatest hits. CD, right <laughs> right when Pac dropped yeah, yeah. and man we were like so hype about that yeah. and uh, she found it and she played it oh <laughs> you, were, you know imagine a, a Mexican mom who we just got we were barely speaking English like we thought <laughs> English sounded like Russian yeah. so we would come home from elementary school like burr, 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 burr. like that was English to us bro like you always fuck around like that. that's how we learned English Spanish is my first language and so she uh, she listened to that, bro, and she snapped that bitch in half. She was like, what do you mean? Ain't nothing but a gangster party. Like, the fuck? You got two of America's most wanted. Like, and uh, bitch this and yeah. fuck that. Snap that. And um, I remember it left such an impression in my mind, bro. Even the, the cover, the black and red, it was ominous, man. It was like, it was, it was sinister, right? It was the forbidden. I was like, what is going on in that vault, you know? And... Yeah. Once she snapped it, it was confirmed in my mind, like, oh, this is some powerful shit. Like, something's going on here. And yeah. she was really against it. And subconsciously, I, I, it, uh, it created a bond. Like, it created this interest, this curiosity for me. Like, I got to find out what this shit is. Like, I got to hear this. And so, you know, I'd play that shit low key and, yeah. and, uh, and memorize the words. And I remember rapping to it like I was doing concerts and... You know, it was just that was that was that's my first memory of hip hop. You know, I saw her ass and I I wanted to see more, bro. That's what that was that was what happened with me in hip hop, and she's been with me ever since. Dog. What about your first loss or heartbreak? Same thing, whatever you associate with them. My first loss or heartbreak. My first heartbreak, I would say. Uh, Fuck, bro. I try to keep it positive enough that I have a hard time remembering that shit. I, you know, I think my first heartbreak, honestly, was uh, my baby's mom. When, 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 uh, when my family, when my own family that I had initiated and started. Sorry, I ain't trying to hit the mic. When I first started my family, it, uh, and it broke apart. My, I, th that was, that was, I, I was destroyed, bro. I was destroyed. That was, that was, uh, that was a. Uh, a hell I never thought I was going to see on earth. You want to talk more about that? Uh, yeah, we'll part, man. Like, we'll part specifically. How'd, um, how did that feel emotionally for you? So, like, the emotions of, of your family splitting apart, but also um, how'd you could just continue to move forward at the end of the day? Uh... You know those you know those moments when like like you, you you described one to me earlier when we were off camera like you know those moments where life fucks you up i mean i mean it gets you on the ground and it fucking curb stomps you you know what i'm saying and it fucks you up so bad that you forget your fucking name you know what i'm saying 
that was th those moments in life like they define you but you gotta you like you gotta make it through them like you you, you know how do you make it through them uh my kids man my 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 sons like i let them down like I, we were gonna do this like we we're a family you know what i'm saying like i let you down so now i can never let you down again like that you know what i'm saying and i you know you slip up you make mistakes uh but hell nah i'll be damned if i break your heart you know what i'm saying again because i didn't have no control over that shit at some point you know what i'm saying but never again like i, I give my life for you and if i say that then i got to do that while i'm living like fuck dying for you i want to live for you you know what i'm saying the right way not out here, you know, banging and drugs and fucking, like, I don't want to do that shit, you know what I'm saying? I want to do the right thing for y'all, so that y'all are proud to be like, that's my pops, you know what I'm saying? That's my daddy, fuck yeah, like, that's, that's, that's what I do it for, bro, that was, you know, I lost that, but I ain't losing this one. decisions to live for your family to live for yourself to choose life I think it I think it becomes your why and I think if your why is strong enough like on some Tony Robbins shit I think if your why is strong enough it don't matter what the fuck happens you're gonna make it happen you're gonna you're pulled by it so much gravitationally you don't push it pulls you and, and so when I see, you know, you meet homies or you meet females that like, you know, their kids are with their grandma and they're fucking, you know, they, ain't, you know, that they ain't taking care of business. You know what I mean? And they're, they're neglecting or abusing their children. Like, uh, it, it's hard to fathom for me because I was born to be a dad. I was born to be a daddy. Like, that's part of me. Just like I was born to be an artist, like I was born to be a daddy. That's my identity. And so like, if I wasn't that, I can't imagine life without my, without kiddos. Like that, I think that's why I rush to have kiddos so fast. Huh? It's not just like Latinos populate like rabbits. It's because there's so much love, so much passion. We can't wait to give that. We can't wait to have that for ourselves. And a lot of people don't understand that. You know, a lot of cultures are cold. They're colder, bro. And I respect them for it. It's cool. That, that's what you do. It snows somewhere and it's nice other places. And we all adapt. But, like, there's there's just some about being a dad that defined me, defines me, changed the game for me. And uh, it was it was a beautiful day, man. Beautiful, two beautiful days. What's love to you? versus what it was when you were younger. So how did those two different loves contrast? So like what's love, what, do you, what you thought love was then to where you're at now? I think back then love is a, uh, love is a word that you associate with, at least me, like I associated with family, I associated with uh, immediate, like family, I associated it with abuelita and, and, and you know, and mom and uh, love to me meant I, I really like, you know, I don't know, man. Like I really, I really, uh, I really, my like heart. Feeling, you felt it. Yeah. The, the passion, especially in the land family, right? So Correct. Correct. Yeah. Like love, like te amo. You know, one of one of one of the things my family says when we're chopping it up and we're done is amo. You know, we just say, amo, amo, you know, and, and it's just, that's how, you know, my, one, of the, one of my earliest memories is my pops and me on the beach, and I remember he went like this to me on the beach, and I was like, this fool throwing up gang signs, what the fuck is that? And uh, I, I learned, I, like, when I made the connection and realized that was love, I, uh, man, like, he does this thing where he does that, and he, he thinks he's a cool guy, you know what I'm saying? He's, 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 you know, 80s, 70s, like, yeah. you know? 
and uh and, and he was just he, he was the coolest guy man and, and just you know he 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 that's just i don't know it's an early memory to me uh what's how do you love. define love now yeah love love now to me bro is uh you know i love a lot of people in my life now that are not family and uh and i have loved and stopped loving uh that's a thing you know and uh I've realized that love is a decision sometimes, a lot of times, and uh, I've, I've realized that sometimes the strongest immediate attractions in love with, you know, couples or girls in my, in my you know, case, like, is not always good love. There's, there's bad love, uh, just like there's bad money. And uh, I... Uh, I just think love now is a is a much bigger word to me, and when I say it, I really say it effectively. Like I say it from the heart. It's like I really love you because I don't know if I'm gonna be here tomorrow. So I love you, you know. And uh, it's it's I'm not afraid to let people know that. In fact, that's part of my super strength. Like that's part of my superpower is being being the big dog in the room or the leader or whatever because you know you're a certain way and you carry yourself a certain way or whatever and then you're like i love you bro and i what the fuck man i uh, yeah like love you too man like and you you know but then you hear them saying that shit to people it's like it's okay you don't have to be hard around me dog like you don't have to be a tough guy i love you i don't want i don't want to go tomorrow and know that i didn't tell you the last time i saw you i really fuck with you i love you like that's 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 where I'm at now with love. Uh, I'm you know I'm single, so I can't tell you romantically. Like that's something I'm doing, but you know, uh, but we you know we're ready for that if it comes our way. We you know keep moving. What's a good day look like for you? Oof, every day, man. I uh, I wake up, I take my kiddo to school, uh, I paint. And I, uh, so I alternate between painting, doing my calls, like my business, handling business, making music, all, all simultaneously. So like, you know, I'll paint and then I'll, I'll go over here and take the, and like to me, maybe I'm ADD and I, I've never sat down long enough for a doctor to diagnose me, so I wouldn't <laughs> know, bro. But if I'm ADHD, then that's what makes me do, like I just, I, I feel like the genius in me uh, uh, as humbly as I can say that wants to do that. Like I can't just sit down and do that. It, it's not enough for me. I need, I need, I need to know I'm on the brink. I'm pushing it every day because I don't know if it's my last. Like I said, I really live that shit every day. Like, if how, I, do you, how do you find rest within that? What's your rest within that within that structure? My son. Uh, and I say my son, uh, and I want to clarify just real quick out of, out of respect for my kiddos. Uh, I have an older son that I've raised that's not biologically mine, his older brother, my biological son's older brother. Uh, I don't get to see him anymore. Uh, and so I don't, when I don't say sons, it's because I, I, like I only have the one that I have full custody of now. Uh, so, you know, just to, to you know, I love my, my, I love both of my sons and I'm a dad of two sons, but you know, it gets confusing sometimes to say that shit, you know. Uh, but my son is my rest. Uh, because no matter how fucking badass I am at, 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 at rapping or at fucking making music or no matter what movie I killed, you know, doing acting or no matter, you know, it don't matter what I do. If I'm not a, a, a being a good dad, it don't matter. None of that shit matters. You know what I'm saying? And so if, if I'm doing right by him, I'm on track. Always N does not fail, can never fail. And I feel like that's an extension of God. You know, that's a gift from God. So that's from God. And as long as I'm in tune with him, I'm in tune with God most of the time, mm -hmm. always, you know. And so for me, it's, uh, it's it's he's my rest, man, because the moment that I see him and I can see that look in his eye that he needs a little more from me and I'm ignoring him or I'm too busy or I'm not giving him I'm not saying the right things. Then, you know, everything else dissolves. It shuts off like that. And then I could sit there and, and really chop it up with my kid and be like, you know, what's going on? And it resets me. It grounds me like nothing else. I just think it's ironic, right? So 
I think my mind works the same. Like I got a little bit of ADHD. Um, gotta be doing something right. But um, like work in and of itself gives us rest. Because your son, you love him, right? But you're working. It's it's labor. But it's rest, like because it's meaningful to you, and it gives you like a break to let you know what's really important. And I, I think that. Amen. Amen. You know what? The right. I've been figuring that out lately. The right work is restful. The right work is restful. If you do the right work, it recharges. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope, bro. Because you could, you could. That's endless, bro. And it compounds. Like you, then you got more energy the next day for it, bro. I told you I'm going off for like two hours of sleep, but we're well, getting it, bro. Love, it's yeah, yeah. But, Always do what yeah. you love, man. Yeah. You got to. What were you gonna say? I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, I interrupted. No, I, I want to hear just, that. No, I just, you know, I, I, I'm always sharing people's stories, right? And then I work full time too, so I'm always like I'm busy. I get physically tired. Yeah. Right. And then. I always know that I have to rest, but I find the most rest when, one, when I spend time with God and I start every day that way. But when I'm doing this, like, it's restful to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I imagine that's how it's like maybe with the kid. Like, it gets you tired. It gets you down. But since you love your child, like, like hey, you're going to do it anyways. You might as well start. You might as well learn to enjoy it. Learn to love it, right? Yeah, I, I I disagree on that last part. No, not no, this, but like that's not you know, uh, is it, that sounds more like a chore to me. Like learn to enjoy it type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, but but like we were just For talking about, just people pure. are yeah, yeah, people are built differently, yeah. dog. Like there's people out there that really have to try to be a good parent yeah. and fucking you know. It, it, I don't mean to keep being disrespectful and call you dog. My apologies, no, bro. Ahead, like you know, ahead, just, we're not a conversation, bro. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, it's uh, it's it's for me. It's uh, it, it's so natural. It's, dog. Natural it's what I was meant to do. Like, he he fucking recharges me. He defines me. Uh, and if you met my child, you would understand, bro. Like, he's an old soul. Like, he he gets it, bro. Both of my children are, are just super special. Uh, but the child that I that I spend the most time with, like he uh, man, like he's an old soul. He's wise beyond his years. He sees things. He feels people. He's intuitive. Yeah, uh, Young C. Shout out to Young C. You yeah. know, that's my heart, bro. On two legs. Yeah. Can't argue with that, bro. Yeah, <laughs> man. That's that's my boy. What's uh, what's a bad day look like for you, and how do you get through a bad day? I'm. I, I ain't gonna even hold you, bro. Like I'm. I'm, I'm a. I, I smoke weed. Um, I think as an artist, our gifts are our curse mm -hmm. a lot of the times. And so we feel a lot, a lot, we feel a lot. And I feel everything, bro, mm -hmm. times 10, super sensitive, super emotional. And so I have to be able to keep that in check because if, if, you, if you have no control over your emotions, you know, the size of a man is the size of the things he allows to bother him, right? So if you're tripping over the little things, you're a little guy. Right, I can't be a little guy. Cause then I'm gonna show my little man that he should be a little guy when he grows up, right? I can't, right? You ain't never gonna hold down a family worrying about little things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I gotta remind myself of that, cause it's easy to get, yeah. it's, it's yeah. easy to get off track, cause you spilled some shit on your yeah. pants, right? Yeah. It, and uh, yeah, man, like a, a bad day for me is no we. As 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 uh, kind of shameful as it is, a little bit to say that, but that's my that's my medicine. That's what, that's what I use. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's both my medicine and my addiction. Real talk, like being honest, and uh, and I love it. Like I have a really uh, a dependence on the way that it allows me to get through the things that I need to get through the right way, um, and uh, it uh, is hard, man. It's hard because, you know, at times, a lot of the times I just want to let it go because I want to be with my son purely, with my sons. Like, I want to be, I want to be pure. You know what I'm saying? Feel every, 
every second of it. Because when they're gone and out of my household and my son's gone out of my household, like, I can't get that back. I, I ain't going to get a single day back. And so for me, that's a, that's a, that's a sin in it. Feel me? And I feel like I'm spitting in God's face in a way because he designed me. This isn't this isn't like I've never gone to a doctor to get ADHD medicine or nothing like that because I feel like I'm spitting in God's face. He made me this way perfectly. And people are like, you know, there's people with imbalances. There's people. I get that. I get that. I'm talking about me, me personally. Like, I don't think I'm defective. I think he made me this way for a reason. But it's too much. It's too much. And so I numb myself with that. And it allows me to get through the days. It speeds up the days threefold. Exactly. I measured it. And so that's also a spit in his face. Because that means that if I could have felt the whole year, I only felt a third of it. Like, you know. And so you multiply that times how many years, how many months. And I've been smoking for like 12, 12 years, bro. So that's shameful to me. But at the same time, it's, it's who I am. You know what I'm saying? So for me, a bad day is not having that crutch. And uh, not, uh, you know, there's days, bro, where like as an artist, I have to do so much mentally and I do so much mentally. I push myself so much mentally. There are days, man, I don't know if this happens to everybody, but cognitively, uh, there are days where I just can't get it together. I can't even put my fucking shoe on. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, really, genius? Yeah. Like this is this is the this is the dude. Like you, you were doing this and this and that yesterday. You were conquering the world. You can't even fucking tie your shoe right. You know what I mean? There's days where my brain just won't lock. It won't engage. It won't, and uh, it's completely off to the point that it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't even hold the conversation the right way. Uh, and that may be from, from some of the substance use, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I feel like I do so much that there's days where my brain tells me I'm not doing it today, dude. I'm not thinking today. And I'm like, well, cool. Like I've learned how to be like, all right, well, cool. Well, we're just going to vibe then. Like, you know, we're going to get through the work things we're going to get through. We're just going to get through the day. Uh, but th th you know, those are usually bad days because those are usually the days when everything needs to be done and it's an important day. And everybody's hitting me up. And so you, you, you power through that. You know how you can. That's a bad day, bro. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what's a person, place, or event that shaped you, good or bad? Person, place. Or an event that shaped you, that you shaped, like had a big part in shaping who you are as a person. Uh, this is gonna sound funny, man. I went through a breakup, yeah. um, and I was only with this girl for seven months. Okay, it's a long enough time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> long enough to change me, boy, and fuck me up. I uh, I was with this girl for seven months, man. The woman of my dreams. I manifested this woman into my life, and, and this is where I tell people: be careful what you ask for. Because if you ain't ready when that shit shows up and knocks on your door, that bitch ain't knocking twice. Yeah. And she didn't. Uh, and, and I manifested this woman since I was a child. I would write to her. I would, I would on some corny shit. Like I, I, when Tony Robbins told me at 13 that I needed to write down exactly to the T, to the physical uh, appearance, what my dream woman was going to be in order to bring her about, I, I, I took that shit literal, bro. I, I sat down and I sketched that out. She needs to be like this. She needs to fuck with hip hop. She needs to be able to understand hip hop and why it, it is what it is in my life. And not just be like, oh, he's in his music shit. You know what I mean? She needs to be a good mom. She needs to be good for my kid. Like I really went through the whole list and she, and she appeared, bro. She appeared in my life. And uh, I wasn't ready for that shit, bro. How old were you? Uh, this is 2017. So I was like, Fuck, what, 27? I'm 34 now. I don't know. I so, so I think this is kind of a cool conversation. Um, so you manifested her. So when you met her, were you like, shit, this is it? Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> Instantly, bro. When you know, you know. Like, that shit is real, bro. And if you don't feel that way, fuck that shit. Don't settle. Keep moving. Because yeah. it'll, it, bro. Oh, my God. Like, uh shit bro i knew instantly it was it was dramatic dude it was so crazy bro the dopest drug in the fucking world bro 
That shit was ex- ethereal. So how was it? You're like, shit, this is what I wanted. So then how was it like um, accepting that and then trying to move forward? Like how'd that work? So how was it like it was uh, seven months? So how the girl of your dreams, right? And you know you have it. So then what was that breakdown like? Does, do you know what I'm trying to ask? What like, do you mean breakdown? Well, the breakdown of the relationship if you're no longer together. Yeah. 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 Oh, the deterioration. Yeah, yeah, yeah like... Yeah. Uh, it was it, when you ain't in a nutshell, bro. When you ain't ready for it, like, you just fuck it up. and you try to put those shoes on, and you ain't ready for it, you're gonna you're gonna sabotage that shit. You're gonna fuck it up. This is too good for me. Mm-hmm. This can't be real. She's gotta be a hoe. She's gotta like dumb shit, bro. Like you really, your mind is your worst enemy, bro. Every situation, and like I I, I really the same way I brought it about, I brought it to close, like. I fuck. I was gonna fuck it up one way or another. Like I, I have a really toxic trait sometimes, bro. Where like, and I don't know where this comes from in my childhood. Like I would love to figure out where this shit comes from, but I have a trait where like, when I meet a woman and I feel she's interested in me, like when I really know you're interested in me, you're fucking with me, you're gonna be with me. I start pushing you away. I start testing you, and that's not cool, bro. That's not fair. Like, that's not nice. You know what I'm saying? And I, I start testing loyalty. I start testing how how much do you want anybody or do you want me? You know what I'm saying? I start pushing to the point that I deteriorate the relationship. And if you're going to fucking check out, well, then I guess you ain't really fucking with me, right? But that, that's not how it works. You know what I'm saying? And is that is that what ended up happening? With her? Yeah. Yeah, I pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until she said, you know what, Alex? Uh, and when I say that it changed my whole life, bro, like I made music about it. I made like she, uh, this woman came into my life and, to teach me a lesson, bro. Whether I was going to stick around, for, she was going to stick around for it or not. She came to teach me a lesson, bro. She came to do work in my life. Like God placed this woman in my life to do work. And this woman did not tread softly. Italian, short, bad, bad, bro. Like beyond Miss Italy, USA, two years and shit. Like wild, bro. The 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 jet black hair, you know what I'm saying? Like Empress, yeah. Empress, bro. She didn't she didn't walk. She floats gracefully, bro. And 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 even the sound of her voice, I can hear it right now in my head, bro. Like. It it, it, it it fucking just, I don't know what it does to me, bro. Like, it fucking moves me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> that, was a, that was a crazy breakup, man. So what was the biggest lesson from that moving forward? So I like what you said. Like, you can want something, you pray for it, manifest it, whatever language we want to use, right? You get it. It's funny, right? You still get it even though you're not ready for it. Yeah. Life will give it to you. You know? Yeah. So... What's the lesson from that moving forward? Like, how do you how how do you get ready for that when it comes around the second time? How are you ready for that? I think a big piece of it, at least for me, is embracing the moment in its moment. Is don't live, don't be so much up in your head that you're not living, you're not present. And that's something she taught me. Mm-hmm. And boy, I could write a book about the shit she taught me. You don't lie, you don't cheat. I mean, she taught me lessons in seven months. Her exit was so dramatic, and she didn't say a word after. When she said goodbye, she said none of that. Call me, none of that. I mean, severed it so harshly, so crazy, zero to 60, that like, oh, you're going to learn a lesson today, bro, like cold. And uh, and I did. You know what I mean? And uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question, bro? I'm yeah, still thinking about the, that shit. You're, yeah. you're answering it just the... Uh... How you aren't ready for it? How are you ready? Moving yeah, forward? man, you gotta be present with that shit. You, you gotta know. Present. You gotta know. You gotta put your phone down. Get out your head. And get out your fucking head and realize what God's giving you in the moment. Mm-hmm. In the moment, because life doesn't. It doesn't wait for you to be ready. If you, you know what I'm saying? Like it hits. You know, it hits, and, and it, it does hit you when you're ready. But what are you gonna do with it? Because you still got free will, right? You got. You still got decisions, right? So. You know, it, it's, it's being present enough to understand when shit's happening now, which is every moment. Yeah. And 
embracing that and and knowing that you're good enough mm -hmm. that you're good enough you're worth it you know what i'm saying you really are worth it we all deserve somebody that understands us and loves us and i don't think god created us to be alone mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's hard to say at 34 because i may be i very well may be that uncle at 50 years old that shows up solo dolo to the christmas festivities you know what i mean but if that's because the woman did show up that I manifested and I lost it. Then I got to live I, that, you know, you got to live with that as a man. Like you got to understand that, you know, and I and I left her alone. Like she's moved on. She's with she's with somebody, you know, so it ain't about that no more. That that lesson has has made itself very, very well known. So ready or not, you know what I'm saying? You, you better get ready fast, bro. Yeah, hey, I love that advice. Get out your head, get in the moment, just spend time with the person. You're enough, move forward, right? That's tough. Enjoy it. It's easy. It sounds so easy, right? Like, yeah, I love this person. Of course, I can. The 2020s <laughs> hindsight, bro. Like, you always, 2020s hindsight, bro. But, like, you know, if the right woman shows up in my life today, what am I going to do? Mm. What am I going to do differently? You know, what am I doing differently? Mm. You got to, you got to be present, man. You got to be conscious. What inspires you? <clears throat> music, life, pain, uh, God, you know, the universe, people, uh, heart, you know, um, all the arts, man, inspire me, move me deeply. Uh, nature, sometimes, you know, um, my son, always. Um, shit, man. All of it. This journey's wild. What's been a humbling experience for you? That breakup, bro. <laughs> that breakup was humbling as fuck. <laughs> you know, when, you know, we were talking about how life kicks you down and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, it did it great. It did it in a Miss Italy Galaxy uniform. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it humbled the fuck out of me because I was I was arrogant. I was narcissistic. I was a liar, compulsive. I was a cheater. Uh, I was a junkie, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Because really, you don't have to be on hair on to be a junkie. You could be a junkie otherwise. You know, you could be a porn junkie. You could be a fucking weed junkie. You could be an alcohol junkie. You know what I'm saying? I was a junkie. I was uh, spiritless, soulless, in a way. Not soulless quite to that extreme, but spiritless, you know, without guidance, lost. Uh, and, and uh, she told me one time, she said, you want to see what a man's made of, really made of, give him power. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I had just opened up a snack shop. It was my second Mexican snack shop, and I opened it up with her. I begged her to be a part of the venture. And uh, just, you know, along with leaving, she left that to me, right? And I didn't want any part of it. And, and, and I, that was one of the last things she told me. She said, to see the true measure of a man, give him power, you know, and I, and I, and I, I fucked that up. I fucked up that power a lot with employees, with my family, with a lot of things. Like I went to my head, all of it, you know, like I was a badass. Uh, she humbled me real, real quick, man. Like you are everything and you ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at, you know? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you, um. You know, humbleness is a big part of enduring success, I believe, in anything. Um, that isn't exactly our first nature. Um, how do you maintain a state of humility just on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, what do you do to maintain that state of humbleness? I think I... I Part of what I do is surround myself with people who will tell you when you when when your fucking head's big. Yeah. Uh, my boys, you know, I hope you get to meet them. Like he, uh, you know, my boys don't. They'll tell it to you straight. You know what I'm saying? And, and you got to surround yourself with people that are not gonna amp you up when you're acting like a jackass. Um, you, th you, if 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 he ain't, I, I have a lyric that says, uh, you know, you don't need enemies when you got bad friends. You know what I'm saying? In 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 a in a, in a ver, not in a verbatim way, and like it, it really like.
checking yourself is, is okay, but you need people to check you. You need people to hold you accountable uh, to who you are, not just, you know, you're fucking up. I'm bragging on you like, no, bro, like you, you, you deserve better. You need better. That chick ain't for you, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Surrounding myself with people that are, that are bold uh, and uh, successful in their own lives. And that doesn't have to be monetarily successful in who they are as a character. Uh, so, yeah, man. Having, uh, you know, having people that check you, uh, rem you know, reminding yourself that there's 7 billion people on the planet and you're a grain of sand. Uh, zooming out, I call it, you know, you start in your, your, and it's a yoga reference, but you start in your home and you zoom out all the way until you're in the universe and then you're in, you know, and you keep going and going and going and you realize how finite that is, you know, how infinite that is, I mean, and, and, and so it just, you know, like I said, you're everything and you're nothing, man. We're, we're made of dirt. So for this next question, if you can go in your mind and think, this life event can be mental, physical, or spiritual, can you tell us about a time in your life that you can relate with the word war? Court, uh, fighting for my kid. I fought for my kid legally in court. Uh, from 2014 to 2019. Uh, and that those were some of the hardest times ever, man. Like, I had never gone to court for a child prior to that, uh, obviously. And, like, it just, uh, that was war, man. Like, that was war in its truest sense. Like, I had had issues with people. I had had issues with other, you know, groups of people. I had had problems with, you know, uh, internal struggle. Like, that was war, bro. And I remember just like the ugliest feeling, like fighting for somebody that we created together. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's wild. You know that we're doing that, and and it, it was just very sad to see. It was very sad to 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 see all of that go down on the on the front that you know it's affecting the children. Um, that was war, man. That was war. But I had to, I had to, I had to come out victorious because in my mind I, I was, my, I was responsible for my child's well-being, you know. So for the next question, same type of question, go in your mind and think. This life event can be mental, physical, or spiritual. Can you tell us about a time in your life that you can relate to the word peace? I think the first time that I really surrendered to God is 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 the is the first time I felt peace, man. Um, I was uh, I was looking at 22 years 22 years in prison. I was pro like laying down in my apartment. Uh, I had broken everything in the apartment. The detectives were on their way to get me. I had called them, like you know, this is where I'm at and shit. Turned turned myself in, and uh, it was over for me, dog. Like it was 22 years in prison, like shit. It was a wrap by the time I got out, you know, like you ain't gonna have much life left after that, you know, and, and, and the shit, and I understood what 22 years in prison, I, I understood and I didn't, but I understood that 22 years in prison, I wasn't, I, that was the death of me, you know what I'm saying? Like that was another, there was gonna, that was another Alex that was gonna come out, you know? And, and, and for me, it like, when you, when I think it's funny that when you have nothing left in life, like when you feel that you hit that fucking rock bottom, that's when people cry out to God and that's what I did. And that's how you know God's real. You know what I'm saying? Because you wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Our instinct is survival. You know what I mean? And you don't go towards, you know, like I just, I, I, I think that in the darkest times when you hit rock bottom, you, you hit zero, you call out to him and that's what I did and I tested him. You know, I tested him. I, I, I said, you know, if you're real, I realize that we're not supposed to challenge you or whatever. Like, if you're real, I need you to show me. You know what I mean? Because my life is over. I fucked up. You know what I mean? I got nothing left. Like, everything in my apartment was smashed, bro. Like, it was a fucking, it, it was a disaster. And I'm, like, I, I was laying in the middle of the floor just crying out to him, like, please. And, uh, and I told him selfishly, you know, I said, God, I don't deserve this. I said, but if you're real, I need you to show me now. I, I, I can't do 22 years in prison. I just had, I got my kids, you know, like, um, if you help me and don't, and, and like, I really tried to make a deal with God, you know, and I was like, if you help me and you spare me from this prison time, 
I will serve you for the rest of my life. Like, I will speak your name every day of my life until I die, until you take me. But, like, you got to help me because I got, I got no defense here. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got me. It's a wrap. And, and they need to get me. You know what I'm saying? I need this. I deserve this shit. Like, this is, the, this is that fucking wall, you know? And, uh, man, in a nutshell, I didn't do no prison time. Uh, and, and, and I'm very thankful for that, man. And that's, that's part of my testimony. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, uh, yeah. So when you cried out to God, how was the, that feeling of peace or how that work? How that look for you? It, it wasn't at that point when I was crying out to him, but where I was going was that like there was a point where I realized in jail that like uh, I had no control you know what I'm saying you got no control over this shit and and you can only do what you can in your life but like you really have no control over this shit and like when you re like for someone like me that's like kind of like an alpha male and like kind of wants to always grab things and like fucking if I want this I'm gonna go get it and like you make shit happen and you make moves and you're always moving like it uh you got a clean next for me by chance I'm sorry um thanks man my apology um I think for someone like me that's always hands on and proactive and shit like that was a trip bro like surrendering to him for the first time and just and just kind of being like I I surrender like I give it up to you. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't do this without you. I'm, I fucking hit dead end after dead end after dead end. And it's because I understand, like, I need you in my life. I tried to fight it. I tried to rebel against it. And maybe subconsciously because my mom wanted me to be close to you. Or because my like, I've rebelled against everything in my life, right? But, like, I can't do this without you. Like, I can't. This is, this is fucked up, you know? And I'm going to continue to fuck up because there's no base. There's no foundation. You know what I'm saying? What are you really made of when shit hits the fan? What are you really made of? And so, like, it was a moment of peace when I finally let go that I realized, like, everything's going to be okay. You just got to keep him first. Everything's going to be okay. And, like, that was huge to me, bro, because I'm a worrier. Like, I'm worried about the worst, especially having kids. I was never scared to die, bro, growing up. Like, I was never scared of life. I was fearless until I held my son for the first time. And, it, it, like, all of a sudden, I became afraid of everything. Everything. How do you let go of that? How do you surrender that to God? How do you give him your worry? How do you put him first? I think I think as long as you know, I, I just remind myself that I don't I don't have none of this without him. Uh, and I don't have control. And I'm at his mercy and I'm his creation. And in a world where there's so much dark right now, so much evil, like I really believe this is Satan's playground. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's a beautiful place that God created. And like, I, I, I feel like there's a huge war going on right now. And there always has been. But right now I feel like it's so exacerbated, bro, that you could feel it. You could feel it. It's heavy. And the shit that's going down right now ain't right, bro. Like you're seeing this news. It's... it's uh, there's demons. There's demons running, rampant, and they got power right now. And and I feel like I'm being called by God in my music as well to to to, to feed them different vibrations, to fight fire with fire, in a sense. In that, if music is your tool, and y'all want to pervert music, and and, and 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 change it to where it's something negative and evil and so that you can fuck kids up and shit like that well then i'm gonna fucking make that music that sounds just as dope to these kids but i'm i'm gonna spit some shit i'm gonna let them know what the truth is i'm gonna let them know it's, it's god first or nothing you know what i'm saying or you're nothing and, and and so that's part of my journey man is i feel like god's calling on me is just to 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 be one of his spiritual warriors and angels and fight in this in this battle that we got going on because forget the afterlife like what about this you know, what did you do?
Can you tell us about a truly difficult time in your life, how it felt, how you overcame it? Difficult time in my life, man. Um, I think I overcame it, uh, like I said, with the strength of my children, with God. Um, there was a time where I really just wanted to go, man, like various times in my life where I just wanted to, I just wanted to check out, man, like this shit wasn't for me, I'm not from here, I'm not supposed to be here, you know, like, I ain't, y I ain't like y'all, mm -hmm. and that's hard for an artist, like, I always, I was telling my mom the other day, man, like, artists, artists have it different, like, like, having to fucking play the rat race game, and like, work every day, Horrible. for a, for an hourly wage, because you got to pay bills to live when all your soul wants to do is create art every day. Like, that's maddening, bro. It'll fucking make somebody want to shoot some shit up. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, like, if they're not right, if they don't have a, a good foundation, that'll fucking artist up. You know what I mean? So I get it. I get or, or turn into a junkie and turn into a homeless. Like, I get it, bro, because, like, this world does not cater to artists like that. Like, it's set up for you to be a slave. It's set up for you to follow A, B, and C. And if you try to do CBA, they don't like that shit, bro. And if you get big enough, they'll knock you off the board. You know what I'm saying? That's what you got. That's, that, that was the, 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 the fear that I've always had with this music shit. The gift is it's, 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 it's its own curse. You know what I'm saying? Attention is not always good. And uh, you got to be bold in that. You got to be faithful in that and in in how you tread because there's a lot of bad um, yeah. Can you tell us about a truly joyous moment in your life and how that felt? The birth of my son, man. The birth of my son was, was, was the most joyful I've ever been in my life. Um, that was, that was dope, man. Getting to see a part of me born, uh, holding him for the first time. Uh, I told him, I, 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 like, I'm here to protect you. That was the first thing I told him. And uh, and I think that's what marked marked in my mind so much. That's why I fought so hard too. You know what I'm saying? Like I made a promise. Like that was the first thing I told him, and it was ingrained a lot more than I thought. Uh, but it was that was a beautiful moment, man. I didn't get to see my other son be born. Obviously, uh, he's not biologically mine. But yeah, that was that was that was beautiful, man. I saw God that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. What keeps you up at night? Um, that my son has a broken heart, you know, and that I can't mend that instantly. Um, you know, worries about people running up in the crib all the time, you know, um, catching me sleeping. Like, and that's not even like, I don't even have enemies like that, dog. Like, I just, it's, I'd be lying to you if, if, if I didn't tell you that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really, I, like, I'm really, I, I'm really fearful of that shit all the time, bro. Um, I don't know why. You know, I don't even live in a bad area or neighborhood, bro. And very few people know where I live. But, like, it's like this real fear of mine, bro, that, like, someone's going to run up in my crib and disturb my son's peace. Uh, how do you push through that fear or how do you let that fear pass like, how do you sometimes you convince yourself you're irrational sometimes you you know you fucking numb yourself sometimes you get the gun out you know and just set it close close, close by enough um, man different ways sometimes you try to distract yourself uh, you know sometimes you check the door What keeps you going every day? God, my children, music. I'm living the life that I always dreamed of right now, you know what I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, like, I, the blessing of that in, in and of itself carries me forward, like, endlessly, man. Like we said, uh, it's, it's just, that, that shit just motivates me. I'm endlessly motivated, and uh, the seeds that I plant you know, start flourishing and I forget that I planted that one and like it just, 
man, it's, a, it's beautiful. Life is what you design it to be. Life is what you create. Imagine you're in the hospital today with only hours to live. What would be your regrets, if any? You know what's funny, bro? Uh, a week ago, not even a week ago, I went through a, a procedure and uh, I was out and like they had to put me to sleep for it, obviously, and all that shit. And uh, when I woke up, the doctor told me that, because I've been dealing with some issues for years, bro, like five, six, seven years, like just not even taking care of shit. Cause like, I uh, just, just I'm mortal. I'm immortal, I'm young. I ain't never going, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got time. And uh, it got to a point where like, you know, it, it, was, it was real serious shit. And so like, I went to go get checked and they had to do this surgery and like uh, this, this procedure and like, uh, when I woke up and I came to, the doctor told me that he had scraped out certain things that he was worried about that he needed to check for, like, you know, for cancer. Um, and the crazy thing is, is, like, I'm I'm still waiting on those results. And, like, so I was on that bed recently. And, and you know, my only regret, bro, was that I didn't enjoy uh, life as much as I should have, because I was always worried. Uh, I thought about I thought about my ex. I thought about Vincenza. You know, I thought about uh, you know. I reached out to all my loved ones and told them I love I love them no matter what. Like, I didn't know if something was going to go wrong during the procedure or what. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with the hospital. I don't fuck with the doctors like that. You know what I mean? I don't go uh, unless I'm dying. And I guess that's how I felt. You know what I mean? And so, uh, it's just funny because you think you know what you regret until you're in that moment. And, and when I was in that moment, I thought about her and how, like, how sweet life is. You know, how beautiful life is, like how designed life is. That was really my, my only regret, G. Are you at peace with those regrets? Yeah. Yeah. You told me what your dreams were as a kid. What are your dreams now? For my son to graduate and be a happy, you know, individual. For both of my sons to graduate and be happy individuals. Uh, to make music every day of my life full time, like not have to do anything else, have enough passive income that, or or income from music itself, whatever. Like I never, I never jumped into music to make money, but you gotta eat. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do certain things. So like my business, thankfully, takes care. Like I don't make money from music. I don't try to make money from music. And whatever little money's made from music, I leave it there. You know what I mean? I don't depend on it. And, and so one day it would be really cool to just be able to do my art full time every day, just wake up and just make music all day long with the people that, that love it as much as I do. Like that's, that's what I'm here to do. You're the co-author of your life story. What's your picture perfect ending? And it's not necessarily the end, it's just if it was a book or a movie, like in your life, what is that scenic? Man, it's it's very it's very normal and stable. Like I, you know, not I have this vis I have this. I've always been worried about dying. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just a big worry of mine. And uh, leaving my son, like that's just a big worry of mine, bro. And uh, I ha every time that I think about dying, I realize that I'm manifesting certain shit. And so I'll cancel that shit and I'll say 99. And 99 is the age that I'm okay with going. If I make it to 99, I'm cool. Like, I made it. I, I live life. You know what I mean? I got enough. I wish, I wish, I wish people were 300 years old. Like, like that's how, I think, I think 300 is a good amount of life to live. I think at 300, you're ready to go. Right? And, 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 and it's funny that it's 300 because that's a, you know, I said weed speeds it up by a third. So it's funny that I want it to be three times as long. That's no coincidence, I think. 
and why those numbers, you know, and that's not some corny shit. Like, that's really the numbers that, that, that I feel. And, like, I just, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I just want to be 99 years old in bed with my lady and uh, know that my mom's cool, my dad's cool, you know, at peace or whatever they're doing, that my son's good, that I have him financially taken care of, but that he still has to show that effort and just, you know, that I, that I made all the music I needed to make, that I wrote all the books I needed to write, that I made all the movies I needed to make. Uh, man, let's, let's, let's fade out peacefully. That's cool with me, bro. How would that, how would that feel in a nutshell? How would what feel? Death? Just no, no, not that. Yeah. Just having attained those things you just said. Having, having attained those? Yeah, having gotten all that. Full circle, mm-hmm. you know? Full circle. Sick. Cool, man. 